Hey everyone, welcome back. What we did last time was we built out all of our scenes, all of our characters, all of our locations. Now we're going to jump into the codex. So that's this whole section over here where we're going to have all of our characters and all of our locations built in so that as we write with the AI, it can pull that information and it knows everything it needs to know about everything and every place that is in our story. Everything, everyone, every place, everything will be in our codex. So we're going to go right back to our chat. And then this is all of the scene beats that we made last time. So we're just going to scroll all the way through that. This is going to be in the next video where we put all the scene beats into the plan. So for right now, we are just going to use, here's our characters. That's our outline, our original outline. So we're going to grab all of this. I like putting it into a separate document. You don't have to, you can absolutely just toggle back and forth between here and the plan. But for me, it's just easier to have it in a separate one, just so I don't lose my place. That's cute. There's a little dandelion filled. We're just going to put that there. So this is everything that's going into the codex. Each entry in the codex is a single entry. So like Emily will be one entry. So we are just going to go right here. New entry. We're going to start with characters. And then just copy. We can just do her name or we can do all of her. And I'll show you the reason why I like to do it in a second document. In just a second. So her name goes up here. Aliases. We're going to just grab Emily. So every time that Emily Harris or Emily shows up, it's going to tag this codex entry. And then the AI is going to know that, you know, Emily's 28. She has chestnut brown hair. She's kind hearted. Sorry about that. One of my dogs just found something interesting, I guess. We don't have to click save. It's already saved. We just click anywhere else on this thing. And then we're just going to go new entry character. And then the reason that I like having it separate is that I can just go delete that. So I know exactly where we are now. We are on Jack. We're just going to copy here. And the program that I have over here is just Google Docs. Super easy. That way everything is kind of mobile so that no matter where I am, I can just jump right into what I'm doing. That way it's not saved to one laptop, one computer, that kind of thing. And the only bad thing about Novel Crafter is that it is not mobile, but as long as you're working on a desktop laptop, you'll be golden. So same thing, Jack Thompson, Jack is here. Anytime that we say Jack, it'll tag here. He's 29, his background, his arc, how he relates to Emily. And then as you can see, since we already have Emily here, Emily is already a person here. And then we click Emily, same thing. She's in our codex. Just click anywhere else. Secondary characters are gonna be Sarah Harris. You want to trade character? We are not creating anything right now. We are just getting the AI ready with all the background information so that we can just jump right in as soon as we're done. Right, get rid of Sarah. Sometimes, so say if you have only one character who has parents who are aligned, and then definitely you can tag a mom and dad. But just in case we start building in 
other parents. I don't want to do mom and dad because say, you know, Jack's parents happen to be alive and then we do dad. Well, it could tag dad for, you know, Emily's parents or Jack's parents kind of thing. Jack's dad, Emily's dad. We don't want to doing that. So there's George. And in this video, we are just going to put in the characters and the locations. So character here, locations here. Say you have like a magical necklace or something, or the grandmother's ring that goes missing and then they find it and that's what he proposes with. That would be an object. We don't have any objects in this one. We just have characters and locations. Put it right there, Lily. All right. Next up, we have Michael. You can do it as plain text. You can do it just straight up, just text. It's up to you completely. The nice thing about having ChatGPT do all of this for us is that, as you can see, it gave us the relationship, the appearance, the personality, you know, everything that it knows that the AI needs, we can do that. Paste, Rachel, Rachel. All right, so we're starting to build our character list. So now we have all of our characters done. We are now on locations. So go ahead and just get rid of that. As you can see, we didn't put anything in, so it didn't save anything. And now we're going to go to locations. This is the Harris family home. If we can get rid of the number one, just move this up here. So with aliases, nicknames, tags, with locations, it's a little trickier just because if we just put family home, it's going to tag it anytime someone thinks about or mentions their family home. If we just put home, it's going to tag it any time somebody mentions or thinks about their home. So those kind of things are a little bit more generic. I generally don't do tags for locations unless it's something super specific like the name of a castle and then they're getting married at that castle absolutely tag it because they're going to talk about that castle and they'll probably name it multiple times and then as you can see locations show up a little differently all right so maple street is the next one but it will still always like anytime someone says hey I'm going to go down Maple Street or I'm stuck in traffic on Maple Street it's going to tag Maple Street and it's going to know that okay Maple Street is the hub of social life and it's the main thoroughfare in town and it just shows up right there the Maple Leaf Cafe is going to be our next one So this doesn't take too long. It's just a little bit of copy paste. But all of this is the building blocks so that we can jump right in. And I honestly suggest doing the codex before you do the scenes just so that one builds the next one. And I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so the Mapleton Community Center. Here we have Old Mill Park. And just like this, like if we had just put park, anytime that they mentioned a park, would tag 
old mill park. So we don't want to do that. Alright, yep. Looking good. We are almost done. We have only that many more to go. So it doesn't take a long time unless, you know, if you have a ton of locations, say you have Game of Thrones level locations here, it's going to take you a while. But we're talking small town. Yeah. We're talking pretty easy to do. That's why I wanted to show you guys a contemporary novel, just because contemporary, while it can be kind of a lot of locations and a lot of background, it doesn't generally have to be. I mean, think about the kind of town that you live in. The places, I mean, even if you're in a big city, you probably don't go to a hundred different places a month. You probably have your same cafes, your same coffee shops that you go to. You know, your same grocery stores, you walk down the stream streets, you go to your same job. And you probably have, you know, maybe 15 places that you visit. Probably Walmart's one of them. You know, Walmart, your grocery store, those kind of places. And those would all be codex entries if you were writing about your own life. The old maple tree, you know? Maybe you've got a park, maybe you've got a community pool. That's the kind of thing that goes into the codex. Those kind of places that are significant where, you know, if you're talking to your friends and you're like, hey, I'm going to go down to the local park down by the skateboarding store. You know, they know where it is. Here's the high school. All right, we are almost done. And then the dandelion field. And then that completes our codex. So now we have our list of characters. This is everybody who is going to be significant in any way in our story. The AI may put in random other people, but these are the people who are actually impactful for the plot. And then we have the different locations. These all mean something in the story, and these all are somehow significant to the plot and the story itself. In the next video, we are going to put all of this into the plan, which takes a little bit longer because it's not... I mean, there's only, you know, 10 entries here. There's seven entries here, so 17 entries. This is 10 entries for the very first chapter. So it takes a little bit. Expect that video to be a little bit longer. But once we get done with that, we can jump right into writing. So this and then the next video where we do the plan are the last two building blocks, and then we will actually start writing. See you next time. Thanks for watching.